We are in one of the most beautiful places on the planet in Western North Carolina. Some of the best people, one of the greatest places to visit. But every once in a while, mud, Mother Nature strikes. Governor Roy Cooper touring the devastation across Western North Carolina after historic floods from Tropical Storm Fred left behind massive amounts of destruction. Two people drowned in the storm. More than 20 people are still unaccounted for. We know that the search and rescue efforts are, are not stopping until we know uh, where people are. The governor says the state is helping with cell phone tracking to find those who are still missing. Crews, many of them from Charlotte, have rescued more than 200 people from the flood. Haywood County officials say over 200 structures throughout the county are simply gone, and it's now a struggle to find housing for people who've lost everything. Governor Cooper says he's contacted FEMA for federal assistance. WCCB News toured along with the governor in Haywood County. Officials say the hardest hit area was the town of Crusoe, about 15 miles outside of Canton. And this is what we've seen all throughout the town of Crusoe today. Cars wrapped up in trees, surrounded by homes just on the side of the road. And this town has about 10 to 15,000 people here in the town of Crusoe, and almost all of them are now looking for a new place to call home. Governor, were you able to get out and talk to any of the residents along your route? Yeah, we, we talked to some, some people, and uh, we, we know that uh, a lot of people are in shock because the flooding just absolutely devastates things. Describe to us how bad this is. This is as, as bad as you've seen? In, in 32 years of doing this, I will say it's the most devastation that I've ever seen, and unfortunately, the community has sustained it. Uh, uh, but, but here's the thing. We're, we're resilient. Um, we always have been. The people here in western North Carolina continue to do that. In Crusoe, Trish Williford, WCCB News. Cheyenne is just 24 years old. She's confused. She's hurt. She's afraid. We're not showing her face for her own protection, but she felt it's important to walk us through what happened the night she was brutally beaten and kidnapped in a violent attack captured on video at a stranger's home where she desperately went looking for help in the middle of the night. Cheyenne says it started after she got into an argument with the man that she loves. So we was on Independence and he pulled over and we started fighting. And then we had uh, drove to Monroe Road and we started fighting again. Cheyenne says they stopped at a friend's house and then they both left separately. She walked away, he drove away. And according to Cheyenne, she was trying to make it to a friend's house when she found herself walking here along Driftwood Drive just off Albemarle Road around 3 a.m. She noticed someone was following her. That's when he had seen me and he put the car in park. I took off. Cheyenne ran to the first house she found and tried to bang on the door to get help. But she says the suspect was right on her heels. He just drugged me down the steps and I was crying for help. Cheyenne has watched this video dozens of times. I really don't know. Hurt. Because I can't believe he would do that, and I can't believe that my daughter seen that. Cheyenne says after the suspect dragged her away and got her into his car, he calmed down. I was like, I'm inside your car. I was like, just relax. And what happened after that? Then we were, he was like, see, that's all you had to do was just get in the car. He's like, yeah, all you had to do was just listen to me. And he said, the more the, the sheep run, the more the wolf bites, and not in the fairy tale. Domestic violence is about power and control. And when the abuser feels like they're losing that control is when they typically carry out on the threats that they've made. Tab at the Lane with Safe Alliance says 20 people per minute are victims of domestic violence. That's about 10 million people a year. We gave Cheyenne important phone numbers to use to get help. The suspect in this case is 32-year-old Lewis Meadows. He remains behind bars charged with first-degree kidnapping and assault. Cheyenne was with him when police arrested him. I was just like, oh, my God. I was just like, thank God, in my head. The lady didn't have a doorbell. Where would I be right now? Cheyenne has a fractured nose as a result of the beating, and she says it's not the first time the suspect hit her. I honestly thought I was going to die whenever he had his friend drive us, drive me and him around. 
and beat me with a tire iron. Cheyenne, are you afraid that if he gets out, he'll do this to you again? Mm, honestly, I really want to say yes. With the, with the slightest doubt of my mom, just leave me alone. Just stay away from me. Do you want him to stay locked up? No. You want him to be able to get free? I mean, I'm not going to, like, say yes, but I'm not going to say no because, I mean, I, I don't want to see him locked up. So you don't have any fear that he'll beat you again? No. No. Are you going to be with him again if he gets out? Honey, I got restraining orders. I got protective orders. I'm not weak. I'm not just supposed to be here right now. I'm supposed to actually be dead. Mm -hmm. But you're still here. Yeah. In Charlotte, Trish Williford, WCCB News. A day like today when it's cool and dry, this is perfect strawberry weather. Well, what better way to spend this Good Friday holiday that's surrounded by thousands of beautiful strawberries grown right here in Cabarrus County? Strawberry picking season officially began Wednesday, and dozens of excited pickers rushed on over to Deer Run Farm in Midland. We came here last year and had a great time. It's a beautiful day, and we love strawberries. We kind of just had to go very far back to find the best ones, which are more darker red. Well, you're taking a look at more than 80,000 strawberry plants, each one of them planted by hand. We believe if we spend more time keeping the plants healthy, we got a better tasting berry. We plant them in October. October and work on them all through the winter. So we got five acres. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Chandler's, Ruby Junes, and Camarosas. Sophia, you missed a really good strawberry. Strawberry lovers, young and old, took their sweet time hoping to pick the juiciest berries they could find. And a few of them couldn't resist taking a bite as soon as they picked them. Well, Tony Little, the owner of Deer Run Farm, says this was a difficult year for his crop, not because of the pandemic or even the snow. Inflation hit farmers hard this year. Everything has went up this year. The one thing that's bothering us right now is fertilizer. Fertilizers through the roof. And because of the price hike, Little says he had no other choice but to increase his own prices. Strawberry lovers who want to pick their own fruit directly from the farm or have the berries picked for them will now pay more. So we went up $1 on the uh, pre-pick and $2 if you pick. Uh, we didn't want to do that, but we had to just to cover some cost. But these pickers didn't seem to mind at all. They're on the hunt for the best looking berry on the farm. We've got some bigger ones out here that a lot of people like, and then uh, we've got some smaller ones down here also. The bigger, the better? Sometimes. <laughs> In Midland, Trish Willer for WCCB News. Ski resorts rejoice. After a downright pitiful start to the snow season in December, Mother Nature has gifted the big three high country resorts with nearly a foot of snow to ring in the new year. Ski officials couldn't be happier. You know, snow turns everyone into a kid again, right? You're excited to see it, to play in it. So we've had a good amount of people coming out and enjoying the, the great January conditions here at the mountain. With several feet of natural and man-made snow now on the slopes, Appalachian Ski Mountain is preparing for the biggest weekend of their season, attracting thousands of visitors from all over the country. Some of these visitors are brand new to the slopes. What are you expecting now on these mountains? Uh, to wipe out, <laughs> for sure. One of the more experienced guests is Jonathan Howard. He makes the six hour drive with his students from Georgia Highlands College every year for the best experience around. The snow today has made it great. It's, it's nice and soft and powdery and they're actually getting to see what uh, snow skiing is actually like. They've been blowing a whole lot. Uh, it's a lot smoother to go down now. It's pretty fun. Whether you ski or board, everyone can agree it's a great start to 2022. From Blowing Rock, North Carolina, James Scott, WCCB News. Woo! <laughs>